FlyMikeHealth.com. It's Casual Friday here today in the hangar. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at a Cessna 150 underneath the cowling of what all these parts and pieces are and how they work, what, even, what every single one is called, and how they all work together to make the airplane run. So for starters, we have our obvious parts like our propeller and where our spinner would mount to. We have our engine case, engine cylinders, and of course, spark plugs. On top of those spark plugs, we have what's called B-nuts, and those B-nuts just attach the spark plug wires nice and tight to the actual spark plugs so they don't come loose in flight. Next, we've got our valve covers on the top of our cylinders. There's a seal right behind here, and that seal keeps the oil trapped in there that's lubricating our valves. Coming down below here, we have the uh, bottom part of the valve covers. You can see a little bit of oil dripping there past the seal. You can see the intake uh, pipes running from the carburetor up into the cylinders and those little rubber gaskets that join the actual intake pipe to the cylinder. You have your air filter where the air flows in first up through the carburetor, mixes with fuel, and then flows up into the intake pipe, on up into the cylinder on the intake side of the cylinder. And then after it's burnt and made power for the engine, it'll flow out the exhaust side of the cylinder. You can see the two exhaust stacks going to the exhaust manifold. That's also where you get your carb heat and cabin heat from with the shroud wrapped around there. It's missing the shroud right now. And then it flows out down through the bottom of the exhaust pipe. One thing you can do on your pre-flights is actually look up that exhaust pipe and make sure there's still baffling inside the uh, manifold to create the proper amount of back pressure for the engine. This little wire here is actually a cylinder head temperature gauge. You can see where it goes all the way to actually be in between the spark plug and the uh, cylinder there to get a good accurate temperature of the hottest point of the cylinder, generally right near the spark plug. Only downside to that is it might cause some leakage past the spark plug for your uh, combustion. But it's always nice to have an idea of what your hottest cylinder is running. Moving on down, you have your oil pan underneath the engine. That's where all the oil sits, the oil sump, so to speak. And you see the filler neck that if we look up through the top here, that little yellow cap is where you would fill your engine with oil. And all just basically sits right down to the bottom of that sump. You could open up that cap there check the oil level on the dipstick much like you would on your car and it'll have little uh, little lines on it with some numbers to indicate how much oil is actually in the sump. You have your battery box and if you notice on the battery box there's this little drain tube and that's in case any battery acid spills it drains straight down and hopefully out overboard and doesn't get onto the aluminum of the airplane because that would uh, corrode the aluminum. This little orange scat tube here that we're looking at, that little two inch scat tube for your carburetor heat would normally hook up to a shroud wrapped around the muffler and provide the carburetor heat right to the air box so you're getting hot air right off your muffler to your uh, carburetor. This linkage right here is connected to the throttle plate and connected to your actual throttle inside the cockpit and above that is where the mixture knob inside the cockpit connects to to activate the mixture control in the carburetor. So here is your gas glader. That's what separates your debris and your water from your fuel, hopefully. The fuel comes through the firewall into here, sits down there, the water hopefully would sink to the bottom and then any good fuel would go to the top out that pipe there with the orange wrap around it. The uh, little drain nut on the bottom there is where you'd push up to actually drain some fuel out on your pre-flight to check it. This little two inch opening here, that's where some more scat tube would normally connect to and that's going to be for your cabin heat. So that's where you're gonna get your cabin heat from. It's gonna come off the other exhaust manifold on the other side. Obviously we have two exhaust manifolds, one for two cylinders on the left and the one for the two cylinders on the right. Up top here, we can have a good look at your magnetos. You have two of them. You have the right hand and the left hand. You have a starter um, solenoid and the actual starter motor itself. So the starter solenoid is like a big relay that acts to uh, engage the starter when you actually turn the key or push the button, whichever setup you particularly have in your airplane. You can see it's pretty big, heavy cables that are connected right to the battery and via that relay because a simple small thing like a starter switch would be too small to handle it. Down here you have your oil temperature that's connected right to um, the oil sump area there so where you have hot oil flowing over it and those two wires go back to feed your oil temperature gauge. Other things to look at on this side would be like our uh, 
crankcase breather tube here where it allows excess pressure from the crankcase to vent overboard from any of your blow-by from your cylinders. We also see this little opening here where a 2-inch scat tube would connect from the uh, back side of all that baffling to go down to the uh, muffler and that would provide the inlet air to actually put heat to your carburetor heat. On the front side of the engine here we can see where we have a uh, vacuum pump mounted and the job of that vacuum pump it's driven off the engine's rotation it creates suction to drive your vacuum powered instruments like your DG and your attitude indicator. On this muffler we can see how it's supposed to look with the two inlets the or I'm sorry the two uh, holes on in the shroud the inlet and outlet so you actually have the inlet air that comes in gets heated by the muffler and then the outlet that would go to your uh, on this side on the cabin heat. On the back side of the engine we can see our alternator here and the alternator it's just like a pump but instead of pumping water or oil it's pumping electricity so it's making the electricity to run our lights, radios, things like that. We can see our engine mount here in the uh, rubber little uh, grommets that absorb some of the vibration and the points where it gets mounted to the firewall. It's important to note if you ever had any um, really super hard landings or you're looking to make sure that the airplane itself didn't have any hard landings, you'd want to look at the engine mount and where it mounts to the firewall to get a good idea of uh, what kind of condition uh, the airplane's in and how it's uh, been flown over the years, if it has any uh, you know, hard nose gear landings, anything like that. Here we can actually see the top of our nose gear and that little yellow valve, and that's where you're actually going to fill it with nitrogen and hydraulic fluid to give you the shock absorption in the uh, nose gear assembly. And lastly, down at the bottom here, we can see our whole nose gear assembly. We have the nose gear fork, the tire, the wheel, and of course the shimmy dampener. And those shimmy dampeners do uh, lose fluid over time and need to be serviced to uh, help dampen the shimmy. That's when you notice when you uh, release the controls after landing and the weight kind of falls onto the nose and it, you know, shimmy is like a shopping cart wheel just going crazy and then you pull back on the controls, take the weight off the nose and the airplane tracks nice and straight and gets rid of that vibration. That just means your shimmy dampener is a little wore out or maybe even some of the uh, connections here in the fork. You can see these two rods here that connect to your rudder pedals and that's actually what gives you the input for steering with your left and right rudder pedal to steer left and right. And as those little grommets in there wear out, uh, you do get free play and you tend to get that shopping cart wheel effect. So pretty cheap to replace those. Just have your A&P take a look at it in the next annual. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of what's going on underneath the cowling of a Cessna 150 or a Cessna 172. Both of them are very similar. If you want a little bit more in-depth video, uh, a little bit more in-depth explanation of all the parts and pieces under the hood of an airplane, go ahead and check out our video on the Piper Cherokee and all the uh, parts and pieces under the cowling on that particular airplane. It's explained a little bit more in-depth. Also, if you have any questions on this at all, just leave them in the comments below. Make sure you check out our Facebook page, Patreon page, website, share that with all your friends. All the support you guys give us really helps, and anything you can do to support us on Patreon, we greatly appreciate. It really helps to create our totally free online ground school and make that become a reality. As always, if you can't fly every day, then fly at mikehealth.com. We'll see you all next time.